Romans 8. Oh, man. What is God busy with? What is the world waiting for? Most Christians are waiting for the bus to take them to heaven. So they're waiting with the ticket in the pocket. You call me bus. Okay. I'm waiting for the bus to go to heaven. Listen. The, the plan of God is for His glory to cover the earth. The plan of God is to raise you up as a son and a daughter to reign and rule in Christ Jesus on this earth over all things. When you speak, you see the authority of God in your life. You see the sick getting healed. You see the dead raised. You see the blind see, the dead fear. That's His plan. That's what He wants to do with you, in you. <sighs> I just thought we're surviving on earth waiting for the heaven bus. No, it's not true. It's not true. It's, it's a false idea. But Romans 8 says what creation is waiting for. Verse 19. Mm. For creation waits expectantly, longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known. <laughs> okay. Creation is waiting for you. And some of you, maybe not you, but others are waiting for the bus to go to heaven. So you waiting for Jesus and creation is waiting for you. Jesus came. It's your time to receive everything He died for. So that you can experience it and creation can see what it's been longing for. The sons of God to be made known. How will the sons of God be made known? Creation is not going to say, Oh, now there is a son of God. A son of God to be made known is already a son of God. They're just going to be made known. Yeah. Read Romans 8. It says, now you are the sons of God. In the same chapter, it says, you are the sons of God. Now you are the sons of God. But then it says, the sons of God will be made known. So creation will see the life of Jesus inside of you, manifesting in you, and through you. And creation is waiting for sons. Sons of God that has the authority that speak and see what they say. When they say, be healed, they are healed. When, it, when, they, when we say, peace to the storm, the storm, peace to them, calms down. And so, whatever you say and the authority you have, the creation is waiting for you. Right, creation includes all the people. <laughs> That's also creation. The creation is waiting for the sons of God to be made known. So, in other words, creation is really waiting for you to realize who you are in Christ. Who you already are in Christ. Okay, so just to get back to my message, I'm going to Acts 2, but I want to explain something because people that hear me saying, pour out your spirit, Lord, we want to see revival, they can easily think that we don't understand that we are the sons of God. They can easily think that we are now waiting for something from outside and we're having nothing and we're suffering here, crying out to God. No. All we want is what is already true, to manifest more. And so my soul desires for the experience of God. Even though I have all the joy in my heart, my, my joy must now fill my whole being. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And so... My, my, the, the thing I realized is I'm not just having uh, experience here on earth and my, my actual destiny is heaven one day. I've, I understand it's not just about passing through this earth and then getting to heaven. The whole assignment, the whole purpose, everything is about here. This is the thing. When should a person die and should a person die in Christ, we know where He is. But it's not God's purpose for Him. His purpose is to be fulfilled on earth. You have a destiny and a purpose to fulfill on earth. The playing field is the earth. The, the stands where the people that cheer you on is in heaven. <laughs> but the playing field is here. Here you can make a difference. Here you can change things. Here you are called. God called you for year to do something here on earth. Okay, if we just get that, it's good. So creation is waiting for us to realize who we are. Basically, creation is waiting for you to realize who you are in Christ 
already. That your eyes can open for the truth. And so if you know this and you understand that we are also in Christ and Christ is in us. And when I'm out there in the street, there I'm not asking, Lord, pour out your spirit on me. There's no time. It's in me. <laughs> then I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive life. Here, I take my hand, walk. Blind eyes see, deaf ear hear. But when I'm worshiping God and I'm in His presence, I can easily cry out, pour out your spirit. It's a relationship also. And it's real. If, let's, let's use Jesus as an example. If you think, okay, it's Jesus, He has the fullness of the Father in Him. Ah, He doesn't have to pray. He can just walk around and just heal the people. Yeah. Okay, what did he do? He prayed. He spent time on a mountain praying to his father. He spent a whole night praying. The night before he went to the cross, he was praying and he was really asking these guys, listen, now you sleep at my most difficult hour. You should pray with me. This was the son of God praying, spending time in relationship with his father. We also have that relationship and our soul must be filled and flooded with God Himself. God wants your soul to be flooded. My soul thirsts for Him. And the more I drink of this living water, the more thirsty I get. And the more I drink, the thirstier I get, and so forth. <laughs> this is my life. Don't let anyone tell you, ah, oh, you know, Jesus died, it's finished, we can never be thirsty again. That scripture means this, when Jesus said, those of you who drink of this water will never thirst again. Let me explain. Give me some water. This is what Jesus meant. Now everyone's becoming thirsty. Don't go everyone to the bathroom and get water now. Just relax. Okay. So, if you, if you drink of this water, you'll never thirst for anything else. You just want more. Of the living water. <laughs> so you'll not thirst for other stuff, but you'll thirst for the living water. <laughs> Your soul thirsts. Until you like Christ in word, thought, and deed, manifested Son of God, that creation has been waiting for, your soul will thirst for Him. Until you like Him in word, thought, and deed. Until you are like Christ on this, uh, this earth, and that is His purpose. If Paul says, I've been crucified, it's no longer I that live, it's Christ. Meaning, Christ wants to live through His people. Until He fully lives through Marnus, my soul will thirst. Until we see Him every day in Marnus' life, not sometimes. Because surely you can see some reflections of Jesus. But every day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, just Jesus. Never Marnus, just Jesus. <laughs> my soul thirsts for Him. This will maybe put it in perspective, right? Can we go to Acts 2 now without being thinking, ah, oh, these guys, you know, they just pray for the Spirit. And they actually have the Spirit already. <laughs> in Acts chapter 2, listen to this. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place. When suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like the rushing of a violent tempest blast. <laughs> that was powerful. And it filled the whole house in which they were sitting. Woo! They, were, they were all assembled in one place. Just like us. All assembled in one place. The place was filled. Like a violent tempest. That was a wind. Like a mighty rushing wing. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now that is Acts chapter 2. It was a powerful experience. These people were now so full of the Spirit. When they started speaking in other tongues. And the people thought they were drunk. These men. And then he, Peter stood up and said. These men are not drunk as you suppose. But they were drunk. 
but not as you suppose. And <laughs> it's just my own, my own interpretation. <laughs> but they, they are under a different influence. And so these guys had a real experience of the real presence of God. And it was something tangible that looked totally like they were drunk. And so they had an experience. They had an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That is in Acts chapter 2. Now, that was not a once-off experience. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. Jesus. Man, every time you come into His presence, you can have an outpouring of His Spirit. Every time. There's, no, there's not just once in the book of Acts it happened and now the Spirit is here. No, the Spirit is here, but it's being poured out constantly and in manifestation in people's lives. We can see more and more visible His workings. You can't see the wind, but you can see the effect of the wind. <laughs> That's the spirit. If the wind blows, the trees go. <laughs> right? You can see the effect. Mm. But it's a real presence you can experience. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Acts chapter 4. Let's just look at this. Yeah, they were, they were um, in trouble for preaching. <laughs> real trouble. Not just people, you know... Like, we get it. People on Facebook, ah, you know, people saying this about us, that. But these guys were now in jail. <laughs> and I think they got beaten. Yeah? I don't know if this was the time they, they gave them a warning only. No. Warning and they had some trouble here. You can read it in Acts 4. Okay? But my point is this. After they have been released... And, and they warned them and said, don't preach this in this name again. Don't preach in this name. After that, they came together and they prayed. Now, Lord, observe their threats. Observe. That's again for me so amazing. You have a relationship with God. God can actually observe their threats. <laughs> it's not, oh God, you know it already. I don't have to pray. No, Lord, observe their threats. Grant unto your servants full freedom to declare your message fearlessly while you stretch out your hand to cure and to perform signs and wonders through the authority and by the power of the name of your holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were assembled was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. These are the same people that were filled. These are the same people that were filled in the book of Acts in two, Acts 2. Same people, Acts 4, filled with the Holy Spirit. After they've been captured, they said, Lord, just give us boldness to preach. They asked two things there. They asked boldness and they asked for miracles. God knew what, it, what they needed. An outpouring of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> because... Boldness comes from Him, and signs and wonders comes from Him. So, God already knew they just need the Holy Ghost, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, operating and flowing in and through their lives. Pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the presence, the manifested presence of God, the glory of God. It is something that you can experience, and it's real. Okay, so again, they were assembled in a place. In Acts chapter 2, they were together in one place. There's two verses. They were, they were assembled in a place, and they were together in a place. In a place. Now, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, I love to just, you know, stir people in this. Imagine you were in Jerusalem that day. You think, ah, oh, I don't have to assemble with the believers today. Bless them, Lord. Let them have a great service. Oh, it was such a nice Sunday afternoon, sleeping, resting. And so the Spirit poured out. You missed the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So what you needed to do is just to assemble again and be part of what's happening. And outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Outpouring of the Spirit. So, you can experience a continual outpouring of the Holy Spirit. 
And both cases, it, they were together in one place. Here's the old way we used to think. They were, you know, you have to have this, this perfect unity because before God pours out His Spirit. So everyone one have to believe the same. Everyone has to be the same in heart and everything. And then God looks at the unity and He measures it. And he sees, oh, these people are in unity. Pshh. I thought it had all to do with our unity. No, they were all in one accord with one mind and heart. What was their purpose? More of you, Lord. I want to experience you. I want to experience, I want to know you, Lord. So we are all in one purpose in this place. Why did you come to church tonight? To see Marnes or anyone? No, more of him. <laughs> That's why you came. So we have one purpose, and so the Spirit can be poured out. There is a value when we come together with one accord, in one accord, with one purpose, in a place, and the Spirit is poured out there. What I see is, in Scriptures is every time the Spirit was poured out was in a place. Even, even um, when, was it Peter that went to Cornelius as he was preaching? The Holy Spirit fell on them that heard the message. They could only hear the message if they were in the place. So Peter came to Cornelius and he preached to them. And as he preached to them, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the message. Everyone that was in the room. <laughs> so, here's the real balance to the body of Christ, and you are part of the body, and I am part of the body. There is a value for assembling together in a place with a group of believers with the same heart. But there's also so much value in going out and being the body of Christ, where the people actually need it. And you don't have to exchange the one for the other. You don't have to say, ah, we don't have to gather in one place. No, don't worry about that. I'll just go and pray there in the street. Normally, the ones that gather more is the ones that pray more. I've seen it in every, I've never ever seen people pray more for people out there than the people that actually gather regularly. You understand? The gathering has an influence. We stir each other, we equip each other, we empower each other. The Holy Spirit is poured out and suddenly when it's after Sunday, you just want to go out. Yeah. Not just Sunday, every night. You can't help yourself. Just want to pray for people. You just want to minister to people because you've been experiencing. Okay. You come amongst people that are doing the works of Christ and you just want to do it also. They don't really tell you to do it. They don't really force you to do it. They don't really, but before you know it, you have the same desire. There's two th sides to it. You're in the company of the Holy Spirit, and, it's, and He's poured out, but you, uh, amongst a company of believers also, with certain desires that's already affected by the Spirit. In short, His desires becomes your desire. <laughs> And you get equipped. And you get empowered. You become willing and able. That's what His grace is doing for you. It makes you willing and able. In the presence of believers experiencing the outpouring of the Spirit, you become willing and able. Willing and able to do what? To do what it is actually about. To reach out to the people there. You understand? So, but you'd never have to change the one for the other. I, I, I've seen people that are so excited about preaching in the streets, but they break down all gathering of believers, saying, no, we shouldn't gather as believers. You know? Purposefully, people speaking against it. Then you get, you get people, they just want to be in church every day. They're never out there where the people need it. Uh, people desperately need is Him. And we have Him to give. And so, when it's time to give, don't think you don't have it. The fullness of, the, of God lives inside you. That fullness of God inside you 
must just find its way out of you and manifest. I used to say it like this. God is trapped inside unbelieving believers. That is a religious um, shocker for many people. God is imprisoned inside you. Inside unbelieving believers. Now, unbelieving believers sounds very rough, but here, faith comes by hearing. And so when you hear the gospel, God is released. But without hearing the gospel, God is locked up inside you. All the potential to change, all the potential to create a universe is locked up inside of you. I, I hope you just get one. I said all the potential just to create anything is locked up inside of you. But if you hear the gospel, faith comes, then that potential, not just that potential, then God is released. You are the body of Christ, a temple of the Holy Spirit, the house of God. Where, where is God? In you. <laughs> inside. God is inside us. He lives in His body. Jesus. We are in Christ and Christ is in us. We are in, his, we are in heaven and heaven is in us also. <laughs> we are in Christ, Christ is in us. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are not going to be seated. We are seated. We are with Him on His throne. Our eyes need to open for the truth of where we are and who we are at. And the power be manifested on this earth. Man, I love to be a radical believer. I, I just love it because all believers are radical. They just don't know it. You believe some man. Okay, just, I just want to, let's look at it from the perspective of unbelievers or atheists. You believe in a man in the Middle East, right? Jerusalem. That said, he was the son of God. You believe in him. He lived 2,000 years ago. But you say he washed your sins away. With his blood. Then you say you are born again. My friend, if that is not radical. You are born again. Then you say he came and lived in you. He lives in your heart. And you don't want to be radical. You're already radical, brother. You are radical. You, you're a believer in Christ. You can just as well go all the way. Now that you've been so radical to openly declare that Jesus is your Savior, the man that died there on a cross, is washed my sins away, and is now living in me, and, you know, I'm the body of Christ. Uh, or even I, I partake of his body and blood when I take communion. That is also very radical. That was so radical when Jesus said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. Everyone walked away in John 6. He said, he looked at his disciples, seek a friendly service. He looked at his disciples and said, do you also want to go? Peter said, no. Where will we go? You have the words of life. Jesus, you have the words of life. Where will we go? Where will we go but to be in your presence, Jesus, and to hear your words of life? What shall we do without those words? Isn't it awesome? It says, eat my fle flesh and drink my blood. Everyone left. That was very radical. Yeah, John 6, you can read the story. But what to, didn't take long before the following came again. Followed him again. Didn't take long. Okay, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. The thing is, we are radical. And so what we ask for is for God to pour out His Spirit upon us. And so, we want to be soaked, drenched <laughs> in the presence of God. We want to be flooded with His very life. 
Tonight is a night where you can surrender to God. Listen, the things I said, it's just for your benefit. It's just to help. Whatever you do, don't take condemnation upon yourself. Experience and hear the truth and act upon the word. There's always a new day. Why not experience the presence of God today? Maybe you haven't experienced Him for a year. Tonight is your night. <laughs> With God, there's never a look back and say, Oh, what did you do the past five years? I was checking your record. He never looks back at what you've done. He says, I cannot think of your sins and iniquities. I will think of your sins and iniquities no more. That includes anything you've done. That is the power of the blood of Jesus. That is what makes it so powerful. There's every day a new moment where you can just yield to His presence. <laughs>